Camper vans are unique in the world of classic cars, and that's mainly because they always come with a name. Uh, if you're watching and maybe you've got a classic camper van, I'd love to know what the name of that classic camper van is. Please put it in the comments below. But we find with, yeah, lots of, lots of classic cars have names, but something to do with campers, they can't really go without one. And the same can be said for our latest conversion. And this here is Sally. Now, Sally, you will have seen around the videos for many years. Sally has a beautiful story that I want to tell you in this video. And I'm really privileged that our business, Edub Services, has been part of the journey of bringing Sally from a lovely family heirloom to a future-proofed electric classic camper van. My name's Kit Lacey. Welcome to Edub Services. So Sally's owner got in touch with us many, many years ago now and talked to us about, he was already thinking about doing some kind of electric conversion himself, doing some kind of DIY job, using some parts and came and sought us out for some advice. And when he came and looked around our workshop, he made the decision that actually, yeah, he's going to go with one of our kits because it looks a lot simpler for him to be able to work on. But the beautiful story was that this vehicle was part of his family for many, many years and actually came to us not looking like this. Um, we'll put some overlays over the video to show you what Sally used to look like. Go. Hello. So this is our brand new Type 2, Type 2, T2, and uh, it's green. It's a, it's a we, only, we only take green campers. We only take green campers. <laughs> it's a bit of bad Nick. Um, but you know, we'll do it up nicely. So she came to us slightly different shade of green. Um, but this is the original shade. So something over the history of the vehicle through its 40, 50 year long life um, changed uh, over the years. And then it got brought to us for the next evolution of her life. So we know that these campers have been in existence for 40, 50 plus years, and they deserve to be kept on the road for longer. I don't think necessarily when VW designed these, they realized they would be so iconic this many years later. But they stand the test of time. The vehicles themselves are versatile, they're sturdy vehicles. And so, yeah, we believe they deserve to last longer. And their weak link is the drivetrain. So the best thing to do for them is to take an electrification kit like the ones from Edub Services and put it into a gorgeous vehicle, just like this one. So Sally features Edub Services E30 conversion kit, and that is a Tesla drive unit that you can't see right now. It's snuck underneath where the original gearbox used to be. And this is our E30 battery pack that sits on top of it. And all of it fits in the original engine bay, which means we're not taking up any interior space whatsoever. Now, this particular camper, I'll show you in a second, doesn't have an interior. It's still going through a kind of evolution of how it's practically gonna be used. But it means that any of the drivetrain stuff that we are dealing with doesn't have to have an impact on those practical aesthetic decisions that the customer is gonna to want to make later on. So here we have our E30, which is the boxed in system here. We have all of our high voltage connections underneath. They are all bright orange to identify that they are high voltage and they all um, include all the safety features in terms of checking the system won't turn on if certain cables are not fitted properly or have been damaged, things like that. Um, and these regulations are not actually in force in the UK right now, but they are enforced in continental Europe. And so we at EDUB make sure that we cover the status that's required for the safety of vehicles from Europe because it's only going to get well, it'll either, it'll either get, it won't get any better, it might get worse. It might stay like this forever, and in which case we're just being extra safe. But if regulations change, we're already prepped for it. In here as well, we have um, a load of connections on the right-hand side here. All of our cooling system, again, is hidden behind uh, the, the system here. You can't really see it, um, and all up inside. Inside the front here, we have our access hatch. That's part of our assembly process. So our high voltage contactors are in there. Our battery management system is in there as well, and that's keeping everything incredibly safe. Our charger is built in on the side. That's an onboard charger that will do 6.6 .6 kilowatts at home charging. And then we've got our new CCS rapid charging system that I want to tell you a little bit more about now. So our CCS rapid charging system is something that we've pioneered here at EDUB Services. And rapid charging is something that electric car owners are very used to. And if you want to use your car a bit more practically, maybe as your only car, then rapid charging is a little bit essential. So we fit CCS, which is the common 
uh, almost universal type of charging uh, that's available throughout the world, but especially here in the UK. And so we fitted it to this conversion as we do to most of our conversions. So the conversion system needs to be high voltage. So it needs to be 350, 400 volts. Um, and that makes the actual conversion a lot more difficult, but it means that rapid charging is um, able to be done on that conversion. Uh, so we've been uh, striving for that over the last few years, and we're really pleased to be able to say that we can now include it really simply on all of our conversions. And it means that now Sally is going to be a really practical electric car. She's got a range of about 100 miles, and that's real world range, not the strange projected ranges that you will get from uh, adverts of modern electric cars. Uh, so it's about 100 miles of real world range, and it can top up in about 45 minutes, which is really, really great. Um, we also have some clever features here. So this little light on the side here actually tells you any status alerts of the vehicle. So if for some reason, either the charging station isn't working or there's something wrong with the vehicle, then that will give you a, a nice little error code on there. So that's really quick for diagnosis, which when you're building something from scratch is a really great way for us to be able to test what's going wrong. We don't really have that issue out in the real world, but it's really great for us as we're commissioning it. But it means that um, we're really pleased that this vehicle now can now perform, not just with an electric conversion to make it more powerful and more efficient, but also with rapid charging to make it tons more practical as well. So this particular conversion, as we said before, we at EW are doing the drivetrain and the electrification system, but the interior is all being done by the customer or by other outfits. So when the vehicle was brought to us, it was a different color. It needed a bit of repair, especially around the bottom quarters. There was a bit of rust packets on there. Um, but right now, this is the kind of state it's in. So we've finished our job. Inside the front here, you've got some practical seats. You've got all the dashboard all finished there. Um, you've got dials that are all set up as well and the original 12 volt system all sorted too. In the back, there's nothing and it's left like this originally. So what the customer is now going to do is take it away and is going to either do some of the interior work himself and slowly work on making his perfect camper van or he's going to send it to another um, restoration shop. And we're really pleased that we are able to do that. And it's part of why we uh, spent so much effort trying to get our conversion packs outside the vehicle. So in the rear that I showed you before. That makes such a difference to inside the vehicle because now rather than the traditional method of converting campus where you would put batteries inside the vehicle that compromises your interior space and that means then when you take this to a regular outfitter to get a decent interior they're going to ask a ton of questions and they're going to probably charge you extra to make some bespoke cabinets or seating spaces and we really didn't want people to be faced with that issue so our electric conversions uh, don't have any impact on what's going on inside. So the next part of it that's really exciting for us means that we can send this vehicle away to the customer. It's not too far away from us. And as it starts to evolve and get more interior and become really practical, we are so excited to see what Sally ends up looking like at the end of the full process. So driving a camper van was another one of those things that was a little bit hit and miss with the original engine system. So will it start? Is it too hot? Is it too cold? Um, has something gone wrong with the starter motor? All these variety of issues that can plague a uh, camper van, which kind of stops you from enjoying it a little bit. We have a few customers that say to us, we love this camper. It looks beautiful. We just don't drive it because it's really not reliable. And we fix that with our electric conversion system. So I just want to show you what it's like to start an electric camper and not have to have all those worries. So we've rigged up the starting system to be as kind of simple as possible, which is turning the key. This one has a brake servo, which is that buzzing noise. And the brake servo, I will mention now, hasn't been calibrated. So it is going to buzz intermittently as we go. Um, but I want to show you again. So the lights are still all nice and original. The beams and the indicators are all still doing exactly what they did before. This one has a gear selector switch here. So downwards is for forwards and upwards is reverse. And uh, the customer has fitted a very snazzy reversing camera onto the back there as well. But going forwards, again, the system to start it in this particular vehicle is within the braking system. That's told the drive unit that it's ready to go. We can release the original handbrake. And then all we need to do is push down on the throttle. And it's a bit lively, this one. Um, so yeah, driving it is really straightforward. It's a Tesla motor that I mentioned before. So it's a ton more powerful than it used to be. Um, and we've got to be really careful as we're programming that. Um, and to be honest, I was a little bit heavy on the right foot as we set off there. Um, but it's again, you need to have that balance between it's definitely not got all the power that it could have with a Tesla drive unit, but it's got tons more than it had before. And it's got more than you need because setting off, we found practically driving fast 
is not nice in these vehicles because they're big, they're high up, they're clunky, but setting off quickly is reasonably useful. Setting off at roundabouts, getting out of junctions, things like that. So that's where we've put the power, is to retain some of it at that start off and then have it a bit more linear as we're driving. But as we go here, we've got the original uh, Speedo um, in this particular version. There's a little bit of a canvas display in there as well. Um, yeah, just tons of practical features, but it means driving it, it's, it's an automatic now. I don't have a clutch. I don't have a gear stick. I don't have to be worrying about what gear am I in as I'm setting off. I can just come to a stop. I can just set back off again. It's really straightforward. If I want to change gear to go backwards, the switch is right there. I can just come to a complete stop. It's got regen braking in there as well, as well as the original brakes. And I can just squeeze it down to go backwards instead. It's that simple. I'm not messing around. My left foot, I don't know, my left foot's going to not have as much as a workout as it used to have. So much more practical. Um, but we're really loving um, the way that it drives. And um, we try and pioneer that with everything that we do. So every vehicle that we convert, especially camper vans, we've already done all the hard work to make it drive as well as possible. And we just put those systems on, um, take it for a quick test, but we know that it's going to work really, really well. So that's all we have time for on today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning more about Sally and about the story of what brought her to us at Edub and what brought her to electrification. Uh, maybe you're in a position where you've got a camper van or maybe a few of our customers are a bit like this. You've always wanted a camper van and there are ways that uh, people can get hold of camper vans that we can help you to source and then we can take care of the electrification process as well. If you'd love some more information, then why not head to our website, that's edubconversions.co.uk, where you'll be able to find our brand new uh, electric vehicle brochure. So specifically for the T2 VW camper vans, there is a new 2024 brochure. Make sure you head to our website and grab yourself a copy. Then the other best way to experience electric classic campers is why not come and pay us a visit? So get in touch with us and organize a workshop visit where you can look at the facility, you can look at the type of um, conversions that we carry out here, and you can even go for a little test drive in one of the vehicles to see how it suits you. And then the final step is you can get in touch for a vehicle assessment. If you have a VW camper van, so a T2 or a bay window like one of these, then we can take care of it for you. Then we can carry out a vehicle assessment on your vehicle to make sure it's compatible with our kits or to recommend you the process for doing a more bespoke conversion that's also available on any other classic cars that we want to take our fancy to. Thank you so much for watching. My name has been Kit Lacey and this is edubconversions.co.uk where you can find all the information that you need to and we will see you again very soon. Bye.